Okay, so today we're back, and um, today we're going to actually be building up to a, an assignment we're going to do that's called the phone book. And uh, we're going to be making a real life database application that uh, is persistent. So, in other words, your information will not disappear when you close your program. That means we need to use file IO, we need to be able to save. Uh, people's phone numbers and their names and we need we have to have some basic func functionality like add a phone number uh, delete a phone number and um, and look up a phone number and quit the program so uh, we're gonna but in order to get there we need to learn a couple of things first one of them is a module called uh, os.path. So let's go into IPython here and let's you guys follow along with me so you guys just you know copy what I'm doing and um, it'll help you learn. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go import uh, OS and then I'm going to go help os.path. So when I do that, so you can see that's what I typed, help os.path. And when I do that, to get out of it, by the way, you just hit the letter Q. But the one I'm looking specifically for here today is called is file. So I want to know if a file exists because when I run my uh, phone book application, it's going to be storing information inside a phone book file, which is going to have all the names and the phone numbers. But the issue is, what if you haven't run the application before? Then that file isn't going to exist. So you have to check whether or not the file exists. And if the file does exist, well then, you should read it and pull out all the information and populate your container with all the names and phone numbers. So we need this is file. So let's see how this works. So let's get out of here. And in fact, let's even get out of this IPython again for a minute and let's just type in ls. Now, I have a whole bunch of files in this directory. Um, but there is one called, let's say, a short one here is called uh, pbook2. So if I was to go back, now here's something that I would suggest is have your, uh, we're going to be using this in such a way that our phone book data file and our Python file is going to be kept in the same directory. That way we don't have to worry about putting in full paths. So what I mean by that is, you know, usually, uh, well actually let me get out of this and show you what a full path is. So in Linux, if you type in pwd, then it shows you, that's the present working directory, that's the full path. Okay, now, uh, not sure actually how you do that in Windows, because uh, I don't know much about Windows. But um, essentially, in Windows, I think it would look something like this. You know, some, some directory here, and then maybe you're in another directory, and then here is your, you know, uh, I'm not sure, maybe it'd be like something like my documents, essentially. Okay? But I'm sure you guys kind of know. I think you can check it with like File Explorer or something like that. Anyhow, um, let's go back into IPython and um, we can take a look if a file exists. So we would go import OS and then we would go os.path and then we would go is file and then we would <coughs> name the file as a string. So pbook2 I think was one of them. Let's see if that file exists. And it says true. Haha. -ha. So now, it, now I was able to query the operating system 
and say, hey, listen, does that file pbook2 exist? And it says, yes, it does. So let's try it again now, and let's try a different file. Now, you're going you're gonna to have different files in your directory, so you're obviously not going to be typing pbook2. Um, you know, you can type in, uh, let's see, what's the equivalent of ls? Uh, I, you could just use File Explorer to um, take a look at the files that you have in the directory where you have your uh, Python file. But in this case, I don't think I have pbook3, so it's going to return false. Okay? Um, in any case, so if essentially you could use something like you know an if statement and then followed by something like this to determine if the if the file exists. So if the file exists, then you know you could go ahead and open it and read the contents. If the file doesn't exist, perhaps this is the first time you're running this program, in which case the your program needs to create that file when it quits. So in other words, save all the data that you have accumulated uh, and then save it to, to that file. So that's, that's what os.path is file uh, is useful for. Now the other uh, topic that I wanted to go over with you today is called command line arguments. Again, now this one, we are not going to be able to learn this uh, through the interpreter. So we're actually going to have to use an editor for this. So I'm going to exit out of this, uh, control D and then get out. And I'm actually going to be using, I'm not going to be using Genie for this because you know, it's, it's too easy, it's tempting to hit F5 in Genie. But I can show you, you can use Genie as well. But okay, so here is a file that's called command line arguments. Now, I did open it in Genie, but it's not going to make any sense to hit F5 to run this. And you're going to see why, because we're going to have to run this from the command line. Um, here, I have the first line is import sys. So we're importing this new library called sys, which stands for system. And we're going to print sysargv. And then we're going to iterate through sysargv. And we're going to print all of the things in it. Now I want you to know sysargv is a list. Notice it starts with sys, so it comes from the we're calling a, a function from the sys module, and argv is the name of a list of all the things you type on the command line. So let me go and open a terminal. So you can't, you will not understand this unless you see it from a terminal. Okay, so I'm gonna put the terminal down here, and. Um, Actually, maybe we'll go like this, and then we'll, I got to kind of make this smaller a little bit. We can maybe make it bigger this way. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say Python 3, and then I'm going to run this file called command line args. So that's the way you would run a Python program uh, from the command line. First you type in Python 3, and then you put a space, and then you put the name of the file. This is an alternative to hitting F5 in Genie. But I find that command line, anything on the command line it confuses students much more than Python does because Usually in Microsoft Windows, you don't use the command line very much, and so students are very unfamiliar with it, and they find that it's uh, quite cryptic oftentimes. However, in the Linux world, the command line is king. And uh, most people who use Linux uh, become very adept and comfortable at the command line. So, um, 
in any case, let me put some command line arguments. So if I just hit enter now, this is essentially like hitting F5. However, I have no command line arguments. And what are they? Well, they're the things that I type after the file name. So for example, I could type in something like cat, dog, bird. This is just an example. If I now hit enter, notice now my program says command. So what's the first thing that prints? It prints sysargv. That means this is sysargv. And what is that? Well, that's a list. You can tell from the brackets. And the first thing in the list is the name of the program. You can see it here. It's command line args.py. Then the second thing in the list is, is the string cat. And notice that's what I typed here. OK? Do you, do you notice that these words here are all separated by spaces? Now, this is important. This is another reason why, well, one of the reasons why I really dislike putting spaces in file names. Because you're going to see uh, essentially why this uh, is not a good idea. So here then I said it has four items. Notice that, let's count them, one, two, three, four. And what I printed there is the length of the list. Okay, so this is a list with four items in it. And what are the what are the things in the list? Well, at index zero, that's the first one, is the name of the program. Then at index one is the first command argument that I typed, which was cat, and the second one is dog, and the third one, or the third index, I should say, is bird. Okay? Now why would you do this? Well, for example, what if I wanted to write a program? So if you'll notice, what does the, there's a Linux command called cat, which stands for concatenation. It's got nothing to do with this cat. That's an animal. Uh, but if I use cat, which stands for concatenate, and I went something like command line args, what that does, let me just kind of move this up a little bit so you can see, is it will actually dump the contents of the file to the terminal. Okay, so that's what cat does. So question, how could I write a program that would do the same thing? No problem. Okay, so in other words, let's say I called the program Let's say I made a program called mycat.py. Now, if I ran this file, if I went python3 mycat.py, and then I put the name of a file. All right, so if I actually was to try and go, I have a file called animals here. If I was to go cat animals, there you go, uh, that works. Okay, so my, my um, assignment for you is I want you to use command line arguments to go py make a file called mycat.py and go python3 mycat.py and then if you type in animals.txt it's going to do the exact same thing as this. So I'm, I'm wondering if I've actually already solved this. Yeah, I have my cat onepo Let's just try it. Oh, right. OK, so this was a, um, a this is back from Python 2. So uh, in essentially, I want, don't worry, I'll show you the solution. But I'm not going to show it to you now because I want you to give it a shot first. But essentially, I want <coughs> that to produce the same output as that. So open the file for reading, print out every line, right? But this is the file that you have to open. So and essentially, you're going to have to read this string using 
sysargv. So why don't you pause the video now and give it a shot. Okay, so let's try the solution. Um, so the solution is essentially, um, let's open up uh, my 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 cat one and two and let's open those guys up okay so here's my cat one here it is so we import sys and then you open sysarg v1 which is the index one argument right for reading and then you would just go uh, f dot read and then you would just simply print s and then you would close the file okay so if I save this and now let's go and run it watch ready oops so if I ran this python 3 my cat 1 dot py and then I go animals. Now animals is sysargv1. Remember how the indexes go. This is zero, this is one. So now when I hit it, it prints out everything in that file. Okay, let's take a look at number two. Um, so this one I'm using the same way, but now I am, uh, oh, this is for a whole bunch of files. This is for this is for multiple files. Yeah, so that's kind of cool. So in this case, uh, if you had multiple files, you could put them all after, separated by spaces, and they would all print out. Okay. Um, I just want you to know that with this one, I could have also done it. I could have also done it like this. I could have said with open uh, sys.argv1 as f, and then I would say uh, print, and then I would just go f.read. That, that would do it too. And then, you know. You're not actually saving it into a variable, it's, it's, and you don't have to close the file. Um, if I save this and I go back here, uh, it would work also again. See? Um, yeah. OK. Um, and if you're wondering what this is here, that blank line is because the print is putting the blank line. So if I wanted to get rid of that, I could just go like this, end equals nothing. And then if I save that and I ran it also, then we get that and no blank line at the end. Okay? Okay, so I'm going to now give you a homework assignment, uh, which I'll show you the solution for next period. But what I'd like you to do is to um, write a persistent phone book application. So if I, I'm going to show you kind of how it looks like here. I'm going to go Python 3, and I'm going to go phone book uh, with error checking. Uh, and I don't need to use pickle here, but if We'll maybe do that one later. And um, if I run this, oh, yeah, yeah, right. OK, so I'm going to, let's call this uh, pbook. And um, was it pbook2? Yeah. So oops, no, maybe it was pbook. Yeah, OK, that's the one. So essentially, when I run the program, it says, do you want to add, delete, find, or quit? So it's ADF or Q. So I'd like to add a phone number and um, the, the name I'll say is Bill and his number is 444-4444. Four, 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 four. 
Okay, and let's add another one, and I'll add John, and his number is 555-5555. And so now, um, I would like to find or look up a phone number. I'd like to know what, what is Bill's phone number. Okay, so that's Bill's phone number. Now when I quit, okay, it says thanks for using phone book. But the quit, all of these, by the way, are functions. So A for add is a function. D is, is delete is a function. F is a function and Q is a function. And what quit does is it actually saves um, my information into PBook. So now if I run it again, and now I say, can you please tell me the phone number to Bill? It'll show it to me, even though I have run the program before. So it'll actually go and open this file, and it will read the contents into a dictionary where the name of the person is the key and the phone number of the person is the value. So essentially, I am storing a dictionary like we did last period but now it's in a full-blown database program and really all you're gonna have to do is just write the functions for these letters and it, and let's say for example if I deleted someone you know if I delete it says enter the person's name to delete well I'll delete Bill so now be, Bill is deleted so if I try and look up Bill it says that name does not exist but I can look up uh, John's number, and there is John's phone number. Okay? And so now I can quit the program, and all the information that I have added or deleted is saved in the file called pbook. And if I show you what pbook looks like, that's what it looks like. Okay? So that's your assignment for next period. Write that application, that phone book application with command line argument. Uh, have fun and good luck. We'll go over the solution next time.